Okay, everyone, we're going to talk about brainstem cranial nerve nuclei and answer the question, what foundational principles can help me learn brainstem cranial nerve nuclei? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. Okay, so the objective, we're going to talk about foundational principles of brainstem cranial nerve nuclei. We're going to compare and contrast the axial side to side and vertical up and down orientation of cranial nerve nuclei modalities within the brainstem. What do we mean by modalities? Well, there are six different modalities. There are three motor, somatic motor, visceral motor, and branchial motor um, uh, nuclei. And then there's three sensory, somatic sensory, visceral sensory, and special sensory nuclei. And we're also going to describe how the sulcus limitans assists in this understanding. Okay, cranial nerve nuclei foundations, this east-west pattern. So we're going to first take the spinal cord and brainstem and make a comparison in their development. And so here we'll talk about the fate of the alar and basal plates. Well, what are they? Well, let's take a look at a cross-section of the spinal cord there. And in the center, in blue, is going is what's represented the the lumen of the neural tube filled with cerebral spinal fluid. And you see that little outpouching right there? That's called the sulcus limitans. And it's going to make this imaginary line like an invisible fence. And it's going to separate the alar plates, which are these plates of cells that are behind or dorsal to the sulcus limitans, and the basal plate that's ventral to the sulcus limitans. And why do we care about that? Well, alar plate are going to give rise to cells that deal with sensation or sensory input, and the basal plate deal with motor neurons that are going to give rise to, well, motor neuron cell bodies. And so if we now take a look at the spinal cord as it develops, we'll see that there's a somatotopic organization of these nuclei, where in the alar plate, somatic sensory neurons are more towards the dorsal part, and visceral sensory neurons are more closer to the sulcus limitans, but again, behind that sulcus limitans. And then if we go ventral to that, then the, motor, the neurons that are in the basal plate close to the sulcus limitans are primarily going to become visceral motor neurons, and the ones that are more ventrally located will be somatic motor neurons. So we now take a look at an adult spinal cord. But this is now showing these three pictures as the same section of the spinal cord morphing over time as the neural tube develops into the spinal cord. And what do we see in this adult spinal cord? Now something that would probably look a little bit more familiar. There's the ventral horn made up of somatic motor neurons. And then there is the lateral horn made of visceral motor neurons in the T1 to L2 levels, it's sympathetics. And then the dorsal horn showing sensation. So there's our spinal cord. Well, now let's take a look at a cross-section of the embryonic brain stem, and I'm going to be showing the medulla as an example. And so in the schematic, in blue in the center of the lumen is the neural tube filled with cerebral spinal fluid. And then there's the alar plate behind the sulcus limitans and the basal plate in front of the sulcus limitans, and then the gray matter is surrounding it. Now let's watch what happens in this brainstem in the medulla level with the alar and basal plates. We're going to see that because of the way that the brain folds and forms, there is a change between the sensory and motor uh, neurons. And so we see that as the developing occurs, we now see that the alar plate is more lateral and the basal plate is more medial. And so sensory nuclei are more towards lateral and motor nuclei are more towards the midline. And so what we see is a ventral dorsal orientation for the motor and sensory nuclei in the spinal cord front to back. But in the brain stem, what we see is a medial lateral orientation for the motor and sensory nuclei more side to side. And so here we have on the left a spinal cord that shows the sulcus limitan with sensory nuclei in the back, motor nuclei in front. But in all these sections of the brainstem, midbrain at the top, pons in the middle, medulla on the bottom, we see primarily, especially in the pons and medulla, a side to side of where the motor nuclei in green and sensory nuclei in orange are located. And then if we add this more even somatotopic organization of the different types of sensory neurons and motor neurons in the spinal cord, we see that repeated in the cross sections of the midbrain, pons, medulla, primarily the pons in the medulla.
But we see a couple of nuclei that are dotted in there. What does that mean? Well, we got to remember that there are these, in developing embryo, these branchial arches or pharyngeal arches uh, that are forming. And so the first branchial arch gives rise to muscles of mastication. Uh, second branchial arch gives rise to muscles of facial expression. Third branchial arch gives rise to the stylopharyngeus muscle. And the fourth and sixth branchial arches give rise to the palatal pharyngeal and laryngeal muscles. And as a result of these skeletal muscles that are derived, they have a special type of neuron that innervates them. And so we now introduce in turquoise another collection of motor neuron cell bodies or nuclei called branchial motor. And they're located just ventral and midline to the other motor nuclei. And then, so the branchial motor nuclei are specialized branchial arches that form skeletal muscle in the head. Therefore, motor nuclei to supply innervation is unique to the brain stem. We don't have branchial motor nuclei in the spinal cord. We also have an otic placo that forms that gives rise to our auditory system for hearing and vestibular system for balance. And it's very unique because the only place we find it is in the head. So we then need to introduce these other hearing and balance nuclei lateral to the sulcus limitans. So the hearings and balance nuclei are special senses for hearing, cochlear apparatus, balance, semicircular canals, and require sensory nuclei unique to the pons and medulla. They're only found there, not in the midbrain. So the organization of sensory motor nuclei. Sensory nuclei are going to be lateral to the sulcus limitans for the brainstem. And motor nuclei will be medial to the sulcus limitans for the brainstem. Now let's talk about the north-south pattern. So here we have, we're going to discuss a vertical arrangement of the brainstem nuclei. And in this schematic, there's the midbrain, and there's the level of the pons, there's medulla, and the level of the spinal cord. And then there's that red line that's showing them the separation between the left and right portion. And so that vertical line represents somatic motor, then branchial motor, and visceral motor. And then that vertical line represents visceral sensation, general sensation, and the hearing and balance. H and B. And why do I show that? Well, what we see now is we can lay down all the cranial nerve nuclei, both motor and sensory. So the brainstem nuclei of specific modalities are in the same vertical column. So then, and that other dotted red line, so the one in the middle shows the midline for left and right, and the other two dotted lines represent where the sulcus limitans are. And so between the midline and sulcus limitans, on either side are going to be motor nuclei, and lateral to the sulcus limitans are going to be sensation. And so we see the same pattern that we see arising in the each cross section of the uh, brainstem. And so there on the left, we see somatic motor. So going from top to bottom, you can see 3, 4, 6, 12, and then all the way down the ventral horn and the spinal cord. And we take a look, all somatic motor nuclei are in the same vertical column. And so on the right, we can see cranial nerve 3 nucleus, cranial nerve 6 nucleus, and cranial nerve 12 nucleus. Those are all in the same vertical column. However, the nuclei are not located at every cross-sectional level of the brainstem. So even though they're in the same column or vertical arrangement, there are areas where we do not have nuclei. So if we now go the branchial motor nuclei, we can see no nuclei in the midbrain, but then in the pons, we have... Um, branchial motor nucleus for associated with cranial nerve 5, cranial nerve 7, 9, and 10. And the one in the spinal cord is kind of talking about the spinal accessory nerve. It's kind of weird. Don't worry about it. Then we have visceral motor, and we're going to see in the midbrain, there's cranial nerve 3, and we go down to the pons, cranial nerve 6, 9, and 10. And over on the right, we see this vertical arrangement. And so the brainstem nuclei of specific modalities are in the same vertical column. So on the foundations of cranial nerve nuclei, on the left we have the north-south pattern where brainstem nuclei of specific modalities are in the same vertical column. And on the right we have the east-west uh, foundational principle where the nuclei medial to the sulcus limitans are motor, nuclei lateral to the sulcus limitans are sensory. And that, my friends, are the foundations of cranial nerve nuclei in a nutshell.